I do not need another camera, or I didn't need another camera, when I searched for this particular camera um, on eBay, sorted out, purchased it for a good deal, and picked it up. Now, this particular camera um, is from the 1960s. 1965, particularly, is the date that this item uh, was released. So it's a very old camera. This is the Topcon Bestseller. The Topcon Bestseller. This is the um, Auto 100 version of this particular camera. And let me tell you, it's about 700 grams. It's nearly a kilo in weight. Why did I buy such a beast? Well, pretty straightforward. It's so weird and it costs no money. It was $20 for the body. And then later I had to buy a lens off somebody else. I believe the lens was 15 bucks, including shipping. Now, what makes this different to everything else I own is I have one lens for it, one piece of glass, and that is it. And it is this. This is my top core lens, and it is nothing fancy. This particular lens goes for about $2 on eBay. Um, I went for the 53 millimeter. They come in smaller sizes, I believe. If you can find a top core lens, or a lens for a Topcon camera that says RE instead of UV on it, an RE lens, jump on it. Those lenses go for upwards of $200. This one's $2, massive difference. Um, so this particular rig, the bestseller and the lens, I think all in was, uh, I'm gonna say 25 bucks, maybe 30 bucks including shipping. The reason I went for it is because I wanted to review something a bit strange. I wanted to shoot something a bit strange. And I say strange, it's still a Japanese SLR. It's still a 35 mil camera from Japan from back in the day, but I don't see many on the circuit. So I thought, what the heck, let's have a go. I shot it and I was not disappointed. Check out these images. Now you can see it's super grainy. The film stock I used was an expired um, ASA 200 Fuji film from like the early 2000s. Obviously I wasn't gonna put Portra 400 or anything crazy through it. I just didn't know whether it would chew it up, how the mechanics were, but the actual operation of the camera is fantastic. Listen to this. Incredible. The shutter itself fires and releases amazingly. Now, listen to this shutter. It sounds like a rifle, like an old school sniper rifle. The um, shutter speed is a dial that's on the front of the camera itself and it goes from bulb all the way up to um, 500. Now, I was concerned initially that it didn't work fully, but it's fantastic. Now, the reason it makes that crazy sound and it's super loud, it has a leaf shutter. On the bottom is a button that I use to uh, release the back flap. And then inside, if you could just see that, it has a leaf shutter, that sunlight's helping me. So the shutter itself is angled in. So if I fire this for you, you should be able to see it. Let's have a look. Boom. So the shutter opens and then opens inwards and then closes. 
Now this is a problem with this camera because what I hear is people don't wanna work on them. But let's face it, for 20 bucks, no one's working on this camera. If it stops working, it's gonna go up on my shelf and it will just look pretty. Um, if it was an RE, uh, Topcon RE, yeah, I might get someone to work on it. But this one, no. I'm just gonna fire it until it stops working. But it's from 1965 and it still works fantastically. The lens itself, super interesting. It's just a twist and bayonet fitting. And then if you look on the top, it has numbers on the lens itself. The front ring is our focal plane. So we can just adjust to focus like any other SLR. And then the next ring is gonna be our aperture. Our aperture there. And it goes anything from two all the way up to auto. So, and I love that, because I can just stick it on auto and shoot away. I also really like the fact that it has a built-in light meter. The light meter is there on the left. It takes a 1.35 volt PX13 or modern equivalent. Um, and in the bottom is where the battery goes. So yeah, super interesting camera. The Topcon bestseller, Auto 100. People overlook cameras like this, but if you want something that is solid, if you want something that costs no money, and if you wanna just get into the market of 35 millimeter photography, go for something like this. I have a couple more in this level as well, which I'm gonna show you later, but this particular one is one of my favorite to shoot. One of the things that I love about this camera is the trigger is at the front there. And another thing I love about it is the fact that I've got the dials on the lens itself. So when I'm adjusting, everything is on the lens. So it's super cool. This particular camera, the viewfinder in here, is a little bit hazy. Um, so I need to figure out how to remove that and clean it. But overall, $25 for the Topcom bestseller, 35 mil brick is a wonderful deal. I'll be shooting it a bit more. I've got some pictures I'm gonna um, show you a little reel after this. Keep watching. Um, thanks if you're subscribing. Thumbs up for this video. Comments down if you've ever used one. Um, 